State Paris Campbell had a 91 yard return, which was a key play against Indiana. Will not get a chance as it's booted way through the end zone. So here comes JT Barrett. His poise leadership, Kirk, in this tough environment. Yeah, it, it really the, the, the straw that mixes the drink for Ohio State. A great leader. A couple things that he needs to do tonight. Number one, he's got to provide the leadership for a lot of youth around him in a hostile environment. Quarterback run has to be a factor. But when that quarterback runs a factor, they get man to man on the outside and they need to reestablish the deep ball. Wouldn't surprise me at all after his struggles a week ago throwing the ball where he was only 9 of 21. You just heard Urban say it. Receivers need to get separation. Do not be shocked to see them early take some shots, shots to test his secondary. Empty backfield for the Buckeyes' first play. And now Samuel, the versatile weapon, will motion into the backfield. And a first taste of the communication they'll have to do to combat this crowd noise. Samuel runs into heavy traffic and the tackle is made by the linebacker T.J. Edwards Kirk the Chick-fil-A impact players well, You just got to look at one of them. That's Curtis Samuel We talked about his versatility and how he can make so many plays from different spots Also Pat Elfline the center a leader and experienced player on the other side T.J. Watt and also the on the corner Sojourn Shelton from the pocket Barrett Tries to escape does make a man miss he doesn't slide folks. He dives head first just about a half yard short of the marker to be third down. Pretty good protection here. One of the things we're going to keep an eye on, young offensive line. you got a couple veterans and, and Billy Price and Pat Elfline. The other three still kind of feeling their way. They have played in Norman, but being able to communicate and protect the quarterback, a big key for Ohio State. The guys have been a phenomenal third down offense in the early going. And invading the backfield is Garrett Dooley the outside linebacker makes a stop and Wisconsin's defense makes a play but it is a first down he just shoots a gap anticipating something Wisconsin has been great at all year third and two or less third in the country and they feed Samuel already. He's been very busy. What with one touch in the first 25 snaps against the Hoosiers. That was a different plan tonight, clearly. Yeah, and, and again, once you pick up that initial first down, you'll see the, the up tempo approach approach from JT Barrett. Barrett keeps it and looks to throw far side. And it was Noah Brown. He couldn't crank up with it. Third and five now. See, they want to get the ball out of the hands quickly on JT Barrett, but even trying to do that, he still is feeling those linebackers. Max Sitchi, who we talked about in the open, he and TJ Watt will get after number 16 when he drops back to throw. Five receiver look, and Samuel in the slot. Rogers rush for and Barrett is flushed and sacked. Connor Sheehy, the defensive end, there to wrap up the quarterback, and the Buckeyes will punt. Well, he comes from the outside on a stunt, but watch the blitz right there by TJ Watt. Occupied two offensive linemen just long enough. They get by the true freshman, Michael Jordan, but it was a well timed blitz by TJ Watt that set it up, and Alvy, Barry Alvarez fired up. First full sack of the season for Sheehy. Cameron Johnson, the All-American punter, and Corey Clement, the running back, is back deep, but Johnson's punt booms to the end zone. So here's Alex Hornibrook, Kirk. Uh, first three starts of his career on the road, East Lansing gets the win. A tough one, three interceptions on the road in the big house, and now Ohio State. Not a routine start to your career. No, you can see great size, you know, and, and I think those those games and the experience at Michigan State and against Michigan gives him some confidence. Early down play action pass. They have struggled to run the ball. That could help him. Also, he needs to be decisive. He cannot hold the football. And I think a big thing for him. When we talked with him yesterday, I was really impressed. You, you didn't feel like you were talking to a freshman. Just seemed kind of mature beyond his years. He'll need that tonight to be able to be effective against Ohio State. It's going to be a long game. He needs to be patient. Not a real excitable guy. Quiet, poised, and a very fast learner, obviously. They fake it to Clement, and the lefty Hornibic rolls out and makes a nice throw. And that's Troy Fumagalli, his number one weapon, the tight end up near midfield quickly. 
Well, he, he has the best hands on the team. He's lined up right here, just a sail route. I think this is the route that Hornibrook feels the most confident with. I love how they move him, get him on the run, get him away from potential pressure, and a throw that he's very comfortable with, throwing it to his favorite target in the big tight end for a big game. Yeah, they get 28 on the first play. This is Clement. He gets the corner, hurdles a man, gets inside the Ohio State 40 yard line. The Badgers running game uncharacteristically has really been struggling so far this year. Yeah, he, Corey Clement able to get around there, and he is one of our Chick fil A players to keep an eye on. Also, the big tight end, Fuagami, he also already made a big play getting downfield. And for Ohio State, it's Raquan McMillan. Needs to do a very good job of leading that front. And Malik, Malik Hooker has done a, a great job himself being able to read the eyes of quarterbacks and make big plays and coming up with a number of interceptions. From the eye, it's Clement again. And a senior from Jersey who's came in averaging under four yards a carry. A very frustrating start for him. If they can get the running game going tonight, you like their chances. Yeah, I thought it was interesting that Paul Christ and, and Joe Rudolph, the offensive coordinator, talked about in the, during the bye week that he and the offensive line worked on their timing, just trying to make sure he's becoming more patient, not always looking for the home run, letting that offensive line try to establish the, the block, and then try to look for a crease and try to pick up as many yards as he can. Second and seven. That's Jazz Peavy, the receiver in motion. He's got the corner. Peavy hit hard, knocked out of bounds by Marshawn Latimer, but it's another first down. Yeah, another good call here by Paul Chris. Second time they've been able to get outside of that edge contained. Watch the two tight ends to the top. They do a nice job of setting it. Steffis along with Pumagalli. You see Ohio State relying on the corner on the other side, Lattimore, to come over and eventually push Peavy out of bounds. But Wisconsin right now on a very impressive drive to start this game. Nobody has found the end zone against the Buckeyes defense on their opening possession so far this season. Clement again does show some patience, picks his way on the right side and earns about four yards. Keep in mind, it, it, everybody wants to point the finger at the youth on the offensive line because Wisconsin has not been able to run the football the way they're accustomed to running. And they are young up front, but it's about all of it coming together. The offensive line and the timing of the, of the uh, running back. You can see against LSU, Michigan State, and Michigan, you're talking 3.2, 3 yards, and 2.5 yards a carry. And just here early in this game, Corey Clement feels a little bit different in the way he's running. He's now spelled by Dare Ogunbowale, who gets the pitch and runs right into a wall of defenders there. Draymond Jones, the defensive tackle, stopped him. It'll be third down. A little adjustment by Luke Fickle there, coming with some pressure. Nice blitz there. He brought his safety up, Damon Webb, anticipating that Wisconsin may run the football. It was a blitz, but kind of a blitz that you would expect against a run. The wrinkle this year is that Fickles helped out by Greg Schiano, who's co-defensive coordinator for the Rutgers head coach and Buccaneers head coach on the staff. A big part of their defensive plan. Hornybrook needs six, is pressured, and will go down. So one sack for each team. That was Nick Bosa, the true freshman. Now a late flag comes in, kind of a skirmish after the sack. Bosa already with three sacks in his rookie season, following in Joey's footsteps out of Fort Lauderdale. Here's Don Willard. After the play, sideline warning Ohio State. It's fourth down. So Ohio State folks got excited and came on the field. Not a penalty, and the sack does make it fourth down. Chris, Nick Bosa continues to just get better and better. And the inside here, watch him, watch the movement and the power that he has and being able to extend his arms against the right guard, Ben Shaw, and just a guy that had an ACL about a year ago. They've been trying to ease him into the lineup, but you can see the power that he has with that pass rush. Andrew Endicott is the new kicker for Wisconsin after the injury to Rafael Gaglianoni, back surgery. Very inexperienced kicker from 46 yards, slides it through. He's a great story. He didn't kick a field goal his entire high school career. 
until an All-Star game. Kickoff specialist. To step up and a key for, for Urban Meyer has been having a veteran like JT Barrett to be able to help him settle in. JT 0 for 1 passing in the opening series. Pass offense that lit up Oklahoma but struggled last week against Indiana and Barrett will throw a slant and the catch is made. Wrestled down is Noah Brown. Ended by Sojourn Shelton. Clearly Ohio State going with more of a quick game approach than some anything we've seen from them earlier this year. And I think it has to do with the respect they have for the pass rush that they'll be seeing tonight from Wisconsin and just trying to get JT Barrett into a rhythm here early in the game. Pressure right up the middle by that Badgers defense. A one blitz and a four yard gain from Mike Weber. Edwards tackled him. Kind of a, a different wrinkle there where they went with uh, a triple option. They modish, modish, motioned Curtis Samuel from receiver back into a two back running back look. And you can see JT Barrett reading the end man on the line of scrimmage. Something I'm sure they'll go back to again. And if the defensive end collapses, he's able to pull it out and not just run it, but have the threat of then pitching it as well. Second and six, the tight end Marcus Bond flexed out to the right. They clock at three. Samuel cuts it back. Not much room. Alec James on the tackle. It'll be third down. I'm going to love the way these linebackers in this front seven plays. I, I mean, they play with a chip on their shoulder and they play with it a bunch of confidence and they trust one another. Buckeyes would not substitute the Badgers tried to then had to run guys back on not quite set at the beginning of the play but Barrett just has to throw it away and now a flag comes down Alec James pressured him the flag was way away from the play in the pit there. It could have been a lineman downfield they had a there is no foul for an eligible player downfield fourth down. So again. Badgers pressure defense gets Ohio State off the field and Ohio State electing to go fast like that to try to catch Wisconsin off guard. I think by rolling him out it's either there's really one receiver there or nobody and the receiver is covered there was pressure and all JT Bear could do is throw it away. Was Johnston the Aussie again and Clement who has not been the regular pump returner for the Badgers this year is back deep a low kick and Clement fields it at the six. And cannot escape and a flag comes down. So the Badgers are going to be backed up with poor field position after this penalty. Eric Glover Williams down for the Buckeyes to make the stop. It's going to be a block in the back. Yeah, it looked like a push in the back on the return. But to Figaro, the, the corner who's out there on special teams. So now a challenge for Hornybrook, a productive opening drive done mostly on the ground. During the return, illegal to block in the back. Receiving team, the 10. After this is the goal, first down, timeout. So the ball will be at the five yards of moving and shifting pre snap. They see that all night. This is Clement running left. Corey Clement has the corner, breaks a tackle, and gallops down the sideline. Clement in the clear. The senior has waited all season for a run like that. By far, Wisconsin's biggest play, but he lost the ball at the end. He lost the ball, and Damon Webb running with it for Ohio State in the far sideline. Was he stripped before he went out? It's obviously, they're going to take a close look at this to see if his shoulder was down or if he stepped out of bounds before the ball is out. Chris Worley chased him down and makes the strip as Clement tries to hold on. But that I ball think, is out and then it's a matter of but I think it hit out of sideline. Yeah. yeah, I think the ball yep. did come out before he went out of bounds, but it looked like it hit on the sideline. The ruling on the previous play is a fumble recovered by the defense. First down Ohio State. They'll review Chris, that I, now. We could talk to Dave Kataya about this, but I you can the first look, keep an eye on the football. I think I think the ball does come out before he goes out of bounds. It's out and then oh boy. That's, that's a tough angle because his knee did hit down first, but I think I think the first look showed the ball kind of coming out. Well, he was trying to hold on for dear life with two arms. Yeah, ball's out there yeah, while he's out. still up. Now it's just a matter of where does it bounce? It hits off of his knee, 
And it's I tough to tell. Dave Kataya, how, how would you see that if you were Steven Beckman in the replay booth? Well, right now it's clearly his fumble, as you guys said. But the shot is, is that player's knee is blocking the ball to see if it hits the sideline or not. We need to take some more looks at this. But if they can't get a shot that shows the ball hitting the sideline, they're going to have to stand with a call on the field. That one shot doesn't show us a lot, so we'll have Brad, to see what we Dave, I wonder if if he touches the ball while he's out of bounds does, and, and knocks it back inbounds, does that what, what would the call be there? If he touches it while the ball is while he's out of bounds, he's put the ball out of bounds, and the w offense keeps the ball. So if the ball's inbounds while he touches it, keep an eye on this, Dave. It's definitely. But he's out of bounds out. now he, himself. The ball is maybe inbounds. Does that impact anything at all? If, all right, the ball, he, if the ball didn't go out of bounds, take a look at his foot right yep. there. Take a look at his left foot. And if he hits that, if that left foot hits while he's laying out of bounds, he's put the ball out of bounds because of touching precedes possession. I think he clearly touched it with it the foot. It looks like it hits his left foot, Chris and, and Herbie. So you would say it's going to be Ohio State ball, but take away the long return there. Yeah, let's take a look at this one more time. All right, you can see his hand on the sideline right there and his forearm right there. You see him touch the ball. To me, that's put the ball out. Okay. So they retain possession then before, before it's recovered. That's what I'm seeing in my opinion, yes. Good luck. Yeah, <laughs> thank you. There's a, there's a lot of stuff to look at in one play. After further review, it was a fumble. However, it touched the player while he was out of bounds. Therefore, by rule, it's a forward fumble out of bounds. The ball in place at the 27 yard line. Wisconsin's ball, first and 10. Please reset the game clock to seven minutes and 14 seconds. That's very lucky for Clement. Chris Worley made a tremendous play knocking it loose. That's why it's nice to have Dave Kataya up here with all, he's got it all covered. Takes all the pressure off of me, Dave. We love you, Beth. <laughs> about four things Thank to look you, at Herbie. in that play. <laughs> yeah, there was. So Clement gallops down the sidelines. Again, by far the biggest play Wisconsin's had this season. By the way, 68 Ohio, yards. Ohio State in almost a goal line defense, expecting to run. They had nine guys up there, so in Clinton's line, it's been sometimes questioned. That left side of that offensive line, Ramchek and Deer do a nice job opening up. A couple missed tackles opened it up for Clement to get down the sideline and pick up big yards. That's something you don't see here. Is Conley, the corner, misses him. Hooker has a chance to make a play. He misses him. Two missed tackles on one play. Very, very rare for an Ohio State defense. What are they? Under five missed tackles a yeah. game. One of the best in that department the last, last three, three years. years. Yeah. yeah. Meanwhile, Wisconsin in position. These fans are relieved and thrilled to see the running game working early. More what they expect to see at Wisconsin. Clement gets a breather with that timeout and takes the toss about three yards. 71 yards net rushing against Michigan. That was it. Almost that many on the one carry by Clement. And I think Clement's taken the challenge from his coaches and along with the offensive line about how they have to run the football. And see a couple big runs for Clement has opened this up and already close to 100 yards on the night. Ohio State, I think, one of the adjustments is being able to set the edge. Wisconsin getting to the outside of the Ohio State defense. You fake it to Clement Hornybrook looping it over the head and trying to come back and make the play was the fullback Alec Ingold. Alex Not quite able to track down that. This is an example though Chris when you run you run you run now you go play action watch him slide out you're expecting OK they're running the ball let's stop the run let's see how quickly he almost got out there it was a good adjustment and good recognition by Chris Worley who actually recognized it late but when you start running the football if you're a Wisconsin player and quarterback it affects the Ohio State linebackers and safeties because they start forgetting about their assignments and opens up play action. Wonderbrook very accurate but that, that little sand wedge could have been thrown better on third and seven from the pocket delivers a strike touchdown PV. And that is the poise and the accuracy that this freshman quarterback has shown in his first three starts. Wisconsin goes 95 yards in four plays and a minute eight. A quick strike for an offense that's been desperately searching for one all season.
And here is the inexperienced Andrew Endicott. The fifth BAT of his college career. And the Badgers up by double digits. You know, Bart Houston, the other quarterback's known for his arm strength, but this is a great throw by Hornibrook. Safety drops to the middle, corner drops back here, and here is Peavy, who's just going to work right in between them for the throw. Watch how he gets between the crease of the safety and the corner. When you make that throw, it's got to be on a line with great arm strength. He gets it over top with the nickel and right between Webb and Conley, that is a heck of a throw, and I'll tell you, he's a rhythmic passer. He even felt pressure there, and he still was able to deliver the ball with accuracy. That's what he's known for. We didn't see it when he went to Ann Arbor. We have seen it so far tonight. Yeah, the Wolverines were able to pressure him. He made three interceptions, but has been a quick study, and in, in two weeks to kind of work on things, this entire offense looks like a new unit, actually. And, and you could see the pressure actually got to him on as he was releasing the ball from uh, Taekwon Lewis, but he kept his eyes downfield and was able to throw in rhythm. So the huge run by Clement sets up the touchdown pass, and suddenly Ohio State, which hadn't trailed all year in a 10-point hole, Kick off your week six NFL Sunday with ESPN 10 o'clock NFL insiders as the injury news all, all the stuff you need for your fantasy team 11 o'clock Sunday NFL countdown takes you right up to kickoff both also on the watch ESPN app. Keep in mind Ohio State is coming off a week where they could not find their passing game. JT Barrett had a had a rough outing. They relied more on running the football and now they're on the road and they've yet in this first quarter to get JT Barrett going and his wide receivers. It's not just JT Barrett, it's the receivers trying to get separation and also how Ohio State attacks. It wouldn't surprise me to see them try to throw a little bit more here. Here's the handoff to Samuel, who sprints around the end and gets a first down. They went two full quarters against the Hoosiers, mid first to mid third, without a passing yard last week. Incredible. Yeah, and I think I think in talking to Urban Meyer, he felt that uh, the way the game was going, the field position, they just relied on the, on running the football. And a lot of that was J.T. Barrett on the ground. And now Barrett slides away from pressure, delivers a short pass, and the catch is made over there by K.J. Hill. And it's another first down. I think one of the things you do as a play caller and as a head coach, you you trust your guy, and then you, the guy he trusts is J.T. Barrett. Put the ball in his hands, even with the slow start. AJ Hill getting his first chance to get involved to make a play. And Barrett straight run up the middle, loses the ball. And the Badgers do not come up with this. Barrett is able to track that down. Lucky. Yeah, he actually gave a tremendous effort. That ball is knocked free. I think Sitchi actually got his hands on it. 48, knocked that ball loose. And now he's on his hands and knees trying to get to the football before T.J. Edwards got to it. Look at Sitchi again. They call him a gym rat. Just a baller. That time he knocked that ball loose. There was able to pick up eight yards, crawling to take possession. Weber tries to bounce it. Works hard just to get three yards and another first down. This defense is has played is, is probably as consistent as any defense in the country. Watch the outside linebacker work here. Tries to get off the block. He does. He gets right around Dontre Wilson. It's a heck of an effort by Zach Bond. But also the corners are involved. They're also involved in run support and setting the edge. They want to they want to almost set a wall like a picket fence and not let Ohio State get around them when they try to run the football. They've done pretty well on that so far. That's Wilson motioning in. Barrett fakes it to him. Took a look downfield but flips it over the head of the receiver. It was Paris Campbell who couldn't come up with it. A little misdirection there from, from the Buckeyes facing a an offense that or a defense rather that is that is really flying to the football. He's Dontre Wilson that time with kind of a jet sweep motion. Tried to get the defense out of position. But they did a nice job of covering the Buckeye receivers downfield and Barrett missing a Paris Campbell. Passing game execution still not clicking for Ohio State. 
JT two of five for 21 yards. And again, Barrett sees a crease, takes off, and close to the first down at the 32 before Sitchi got him. See where they spot this right on the yellow line, and they'll move the sticks. Wisconsin has to defend Ohio State as if JT Barrett is a running back. I mean, he's, a, he's a quarterback, but as we saw last week, he carried the football 26 times, and their defensive coordinator, Justin Wilcox, saying that, you know, we, we have to respect him, and it affects how we call the game because we got to make sure we have the, guy, the, amount, the right amount of guys in the box. Yeah, and they fake it, and Barrett takes off. It's a straight run, and he just barrels down near the 10 yard line. Dakota Dixon stopped him. Yeah, good block here by the freshman coming around. It's Michael Jordan. Watch him be able to make that block right there. Also, his lead block there by Mike Weber. And there's JT Barrett. He is not necessarily the fastest at running Urban Meyer's offense, but he understands the scheme. He understands where the, the, the holes are, and he's very powerful. He'll run through tackles. This is Michael Jordan. He's 6'7", and not like the original. He's a <laughs> true freshman out of Michigan. First down at the 11. Barrett gives it to Weber who barrels straight ahead. So you focus on the quarterback and now they're running back with a quick burst down inside the five. Again, that same look they went to earlier. It's a little bit of a but different look going to that triple option. The guy's playing with tempo here. In second and three, Barrett looks to throw in the flat. It's incomplete. Marcus Baugh, the tight end, was very well covered there. Eric Tindall, the corner. Yeah, even if Paul made the, the catch there, he probably would have been held short of getting into the end zone. So they can make a first down at the one. It's third and three from the four. Hesitated and is dropped. Was he looking to make a little head jump pass there? There was certainly no room to run. I don't, I don't see anybody that he was trying to throw the football to. I think it was a play that was just disrupted. How about T.J. Watt, how fast he comes off the edge? Watch him right here, sensing and anticipating the potential of quarterback run. The guard that pulled around, Jordan didn't even have a chance because of the anticipation. It's one thing to be an athlete. It's another thing to be smart and athletic, and that's what Watt has. That runs in the Watt family, doesn't it? Yeah. This is Tyler Durbin, a very, very reliable short yardage kicker who knocks it through. Ohio State, a 67 yard drive in 11 plays, but certainly disappointed to have it stall down inside the five yard line. It's an offense that had scored 21 touchdowns in their 29 red zone appearances. So the Buckeyes don't answer with seven, but they got some things going, and it, it looks like similar game plan. It's going to be a lot of number 16 running the ball, at least so far. Yeah, and I think until they're able to find a rhythm in their, in their passing game. Watching here early, oh, the Ohio State receivers, one way to slow down an aggressive defense is to try to get behind them, but give Wisconsin credit. They are holding up outstanding in man-to-man -man, uh, pressure right now, and it makes it a lot tougher when you're trying to be able to throw the football when you can't get downfield. So you're loading up on JT Barrett and on that running game. Yeah, the Badgers well aware of what Urban Meyer pointed out. The offense is predicated on successful deep shots, right? I mean, they Absolutely. stretch you horizontally, but Barrett getting the ball downfield, those receivers getting separation against Manny. If they don't do that, it's yeah. tough. It, it's a horizontal attack, vertical, vertical attack, and a power run game, but it starts with their ability to throw the ball downfield when they're really humming. Durbin's kick sails to the end zone. To Samantha Ponder. Yeah, Chris, when this Ohio State defense came off the field, they were seemingly in a state of shock, a position that they're not used to being in, hanging their heads really quiet on the sideline. Their defensive coordinator, Luke, Luke Fickle, really got after him, saying, you've got to keep your head in this game. The message was settle down, and I know this is going to come as a shock, but we have got to tackle, just getting back to fundamentals. But guys, it's kind of foreign territory for them on the road to be struggling early like this. It sure is. It's definitely weird when they start missing tackles. That has been their calling card as a defense. But this is a, an inexperienced group. As well as they played, a lot of guys are in unfamiliar territory. Big conference game on the road for the first time. 
Clement spins through the middle and another productive first down run before Lattimore the corner stopped him. And another rare missed tackle that time by the middle linebacker Raekwon McMillan. Corey Clement looks like a different back tonight. It reminds me of how he looked two years ago when he was a sophomore backing up Melvin Gordon. He was very very effective back last year battled through injuries and, and this year slow to start. Had a good talk with Ron Dane the Heisman Trophy winner yesterday. He just echoed what Paul Christ had said and what Clement himself had said. He he was just off his game mentally not not trusting the offensive line not running with patience. Not much room that time it'll set up third and short. But when the guys up front who are very very young are not opening typical Wisconsin holes it can get in the running backs head right. Absolutely. Absolutely. And it and really puts all it all of your production on a redshirt freshman quarterback and, and an offense that isn't necessarily equipped to pass in obvious situations when they do well is when they throw early on first and ten a little play action and then get back to being able to run the football. This is a big third down here early in this game. They need three. Morning Brick looked in the direction of Ogan Bwale, who's their third down back, but he was well covered by Raekwon McMillan. Bosa pressured him, and it's fourth down. I'll tell you, this is big news to watch Nick Bosa, the true freshman. They, it seems like in the last couple weeks just unleashed him. On third down, they bring him in as part of their nickel package, and right now he is having his way with Bo Binshaw, that right guard. He's a sophomore. And Bosa's known as a young true freshman for his power, but you can start to see he, that his knee is getting healthier and healthier, and he also has great suddenness to him as well. Wisowski to punt. It's a high one, not very long. And the fair catch is made there by Dontre Wilson. What's cool about Bosa, he comes in with the big name and all the hype, but they say how humble he is, what a good listener he is. And there's a lot of veterans at that position who can teach him things and he's been eager to learn. It was incredible to hear Jalen Holmes talk about that how he comes in he's he's determined to learn and listen to the older players of course his brother such a great career at Ohio State did so many amazing things individually and part of so many great teams and now playing on on Sundays for the Chargers good to see him back and playing and he made a couple sacks in his, his NFL yeah. debut against the Raiders and played well against the Broncos. <laughs> the beat goes on yeah. but a lot of these these coaches have been around say that to look at Nick Bosa as a true freshman, he probably comes in maybe even more powerful than when Joey came That's in. That's hard to believe. Freshman. I know. Are you kidding me? So Barrett you know, back to work. Option look. Samuel is hit for a loss. Again, Sitchy, who morphed the haircut from kind of a, a mullet to a mohawk. He made the move this week or clean shave for this big game on the side. He sure did. There's <laughs> a flag. He's an engaging guy, the former walk on, the very Great instinctive, scrappy guy. Think about a guy that gets the most out of his ability. Studies a lot, obviously. Well, Jim Rat, like you said, so he, many of these guys. Yeah, he, he, he told us that, you know, he's, he's not necessarily the fastest guy, and as a former walk on, he learned to really appreciate the work ethic. After the play, sideline interference, offense, 15 yard penalty, the down counts. Second down. You know, they got a warning the first time. Yeah, they, I, I'm watching that, I think the referee who was calling the blowing his whistle hit Urban Meyer in the face on the sideline there. You get a warning, and the second time costs you 15, and that is a costly penalty. It, it moves him back to the 15 yard line. Final minute of the first quarter, and they're backed up now near the Badgers student section, loudest part of the stadium. Second and 27. High snap. Samuel again has to sidestep a defender in the backfield that was duly with early penetration. Go back to that sideline interference. You see Urban Meyer right here. See the official starts to call the, the play as dead and hits Urban <laughs> Get Meyer. The, the windmill upside the head yeah. there. Yeah. Cost Ohio State big yards pushes them back. I was wondering who the coach was going to yell at but you, you can't yell at anybody when you're the one getting your head in the way. <laughs> Good spot by our crew there. Third and 20 now. Inside of 10 seconds in the quarter. 
Now, they don't have to snap it, and they won't. A flag does come out. JT says the quarter ran out before the play clock did. Let's see if he's right. Prior to the false start, the first quarter has ended. Timeout. So Wisconsin with 154 yards of offense for Paul Chris against a tough defense. Back after this message and a word from your local ABC station, 10-7 for Wisconsin. 10-3, should say. Wisconsin defense so far for Barrett and company. JT's been an effective runner, but just two for six passing. And facing a third and 20 as we begin the second quarter. Option look, pitch. Samuel cuts it back and slips down across the 30, well short of the first down, and his flag is out. It's going to be a hold on third and long. It's going to be a hold on Ohio State. Receiver trying to block. Receivers in this offense better be good blockers. You'll yeah. earn the wrath of Urban Meyer. Absolutely. It's such a key to the success. Yep. KJ Hill that time, number 14, trying to make a block. Just illegal block in the back. Offense, number 14. That penalty's declined. Fourth down. We haven't seen a lot of KJ Hill this season, and that will not uh, that will not please the coaches. There's the block right there. He grabbed a hold of the jersey and locked him in the back. So Meyer had a 15-yard penalty on himself for interfering. And that penalty sends out the punter Johnston. Clement has already had a big night running the ball again back deep, giving a lot of respect to Johnston. But this is kind of a short kick. If you see Melvin Gordon, it's, a, it's the bye week, or the Chargers are, I guess, played Thursday, so he's here keeping an eye on Clement. And they hand it to Peavy on the end around, and Jazz Peavy's in the clear. Cuts back out near midfield. Two productive runs for the receiver tonight. Ohio State playing a lot of man to man, which means Denzel Ward needs to run with Peavy. You can see him in the background trying to run with him. It's a great way to complement the inside power running. If you don't always have the great vertical passing game, you can stretch a defense horizontally, and they've done that now a couple times with Jazz Peavy, number 11. Yeah, he's got 40 yards on two carries and the 24 yard touchdown reception from Hornybrook. He's their fastest receiver, the one guy they felt could get separation, could make a big downfield play. This is Ogun Wale, and he's not really an off tackle power back, more of a third down guy, but a productive game. And again, a nice compliment. Played a lot of football a year ago. You know, Ohio State's been interesting. They've lost contain. They've not been able to set the edge quite a bit here tonight. And wouldn't surprise me to see their edge pressure, the defensive ends, whether it's Lewis and Hubbard, trying to get upfield and trying to prevent Wisconsin's running game getting around the corner. Sam's report was a good one because you can see the look in the eyes of the Ohio State defenders, not what we're used to seeing. Ogunbowale. Short gain. It'll be third down for the Buckeyes 44. Jerome Baker, one of the backup linebackers, tackled him. Ogumbawale, who's played a lot of football, and it's by him coming in to be able to carry the ball, not just play on third down. It, it gives Corey Clement a rest. And in this offense, you kind of need two, maybe even a third back, to be able to stay fresh for an entire 60 minutes. A Taiwan deal is out with an ankle again. He's one of their guys they would rotate in, but not available. Tight end Fumagalli is in the backfield to the left of the quarterback. Hornybrook chased and sacked for a second time, lost the ball. And able to fall back on it, Sam Hubbard, the sophomore from Cincinnati, and that's that. You put Hornybrook into obvious passing situations. It's an advantage for Ohio State. You have Lewis at the side at the top, but look at Sam Hubbard just use a bull rush there to go right over top of David Edwards. They have mixed a couple guys, Jacob Maxwell and now David Edwards, trying to figure it out. You can see Edwards holds on to Hubbard and still unable to slow him down. That's a big advantage for Ohio State to get Hornibrook into those third and pa obvious Wisowski passing and down. formation, and he boots it away. Wilson backpedaling, fields it at the eight. 
escapes initially, spins around across the 20 yard line. So JT Barrett still looking to get the passing game going. Back to work, Buckeyes. Little breeze blowing right to left, helping all those kickoffs as we bring in the Bear, Chris Felica, with tonight's Affleck trivia question. Thanks, Chris. Wisconsin, of course, has beaten two teams this year ranked in the top 10 at game time. Who was the last Big Ten team to win three games in a season versus a top 10 team prior to the conference championship? Prior to the conference championship. So three regular season top 10 wins. There haven't been a ton of years when the Big Ten's had a whole bunch of teams in the top 10. No. Get knocked off by one team. It might be in Iowa. But I got to. You know, that's not your final answer 80, yet? 85, 80, 85 maybe? It's impressive if that's right. Play action at first and <laughs> Hornibrook now flips it short. It's a screen here to Fumagalli. And the tight end lowers his head for a nice first down. Yeah, all right, Bear. Kirk's impatient. He wants to know if he's right with his Iowa guess. Time now to answer that Athlon trivia question. I'll check on Iowa for you in break, but the answer is Michigan in 2003. Beat top 10 Purdue, Michigan State, and Ohio State. All victims to the Wolverines that year. 2003 Michigan. So the Breeze era. Bonus question: Who was the quarterback on that team? Bear. That was John Navarre, wasn't it? No, I don't. I don't think so. What was it, Navarre? Look, dig that one up for me. <laughs> bonus questions. PV again on the end around. This play has worked three times for Wisconsin. They move the six to the 40. When you run the ball inside, 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 your defensive linemen have to think about collapsing down, winning their gap. And what a great compliment for Paul Christ is Jake PV running around the edge. Ohio State continuing to lose that edge, and, and PV just continuing to pick up big yards, not only through the air, but also on the ground. Third time he's run the ball is already 48 yards. Officials timeout, there's an issue with the chains. Well, that's a great name, isn't it? Jazz PB. He's been in tune tonight. Junior from Kenosha, Wisconsin. Jazz PB is their really their best vertical threat. We saw him earlier with that touchdown pass. Yeah, he only had four carries coming into tonight's game so they hadn't shown that a lot you get the feeling that the Paul Chris was going to show the Buckeyes defense some things they hadn't featured too much earlier this year this you expect to see I formation handoff to Clement who uses a stiff arm and is finally slammed down by Chris Worley strength on strength there one thing that for fans that are watching at home and they're, and they're watching Wisconsin give Ohio State's defense a lot of different formations personnel groups they're moving tight ends from right to the left uh, the receivers that are in motion because Ohio State has to adjust so much with their front and the secondary they're just trying to affect the Ohio State communication and they're trying to create a gap or hit a crease when they're running the football that's why they're giving them so many different looks they pitch it to Clement this time it was around that left side for a short game. It'll be third down. By the way, you were correct. John Navarre was the quarterback for Michigan in 03. You know, Paul Chris made it very clear to us. He said, you know, we can't just line up in the same formation and run the football and have success against Ohio State's athletes. We've got to we've got to do a lot of different stuff. Give them a lot of different window dressing to try to affect them. Here comes a third down. We'll keep an eye on, on Nick Bosa, who again is in the middle there, matched up against Ben Shaw. Bosa with one of the two Ohio State sacks so far. Morning break delivers strike for Magali first down. Another accurate throw to a very reliable route runner. Watch him go to the outside and then back to the inside. It's a great route. Hornibrook in rhythm here. Does a nice job because of the middle linebacker McMillan on the blitz. It opened up the middle and Hornibrook sits in there patiently even though he's getting blitzed and waits for his tight end to open up. He's a tough guy. He had his hand stepped on in practice before the opener against LSU. 30 stitches. 15 on the top, 15 on the bottom. Just goes out and, and plays against the Bayou Bengals. No problem. Hornibrook. From the pocket, checks it down. Ogunbwale is hit hard. Picks up about four. 
Worley again on the stop. He's been active. And Luke Fickle telling us a great story about Chris Worley. We talked so much about Ohio State losing all those great players to the NFL. And, and collectively, these guys, a lot of new faces. And Chris Worley, they said, is a great story. Guy who's a fourth-year guy has had to sit around and wait behind some superstars like guys like Darren Lee. And, and Josh Perry and now it's his turn and he just he seems to have a great appreciation for it after sitting around and learning from some of those guys and now it's his turn. Coaches love those guys don't they the grinders patience pays off. Orny Brook rolls out and that time could not find Rob Wheelwright just beyond his outstretched hands it'll be third down. But again that that same look who, where they threw it to the tight end earlier to Fumagalli. This time they're trying to get it to the Columbus native real wheel ride is just a little bit beyond his grasp to be able to come up with a catch but the exact same kind of sail route where it's about 18 to 20 yards and bending towards the sideline. It's an open hole right now in that defense. Rogers two or five so far on third down. Morningbrook steps up. Could have scrambled now takes a downfield shot and it's complete down at the 10 yard line Fumagalli again got free from Damon Webb the safety. Well Malik Hooker number 24 here takes his eyes off of the tight end right there he's, you can see him just in front of Fumagalli he got his eyes caught up because the quarterback looked like he might scramble. He loses where Fumagalli is, and he's able to sneak behind him. How about the catch and then the tippy, the, 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 the uh, toe tap there to stay in bounds? And on the route, he stayed in bounds. Great awareness there by 81. Would you like the throw too? He's wafted right in the perfect position. So Badgers handed to Clement, who's cut down very quickly, charging up into the gap. There was Lattimore the corner. Badgers trying to again be efficient in the red zone add to this lead which is 4 12 before halftime. Impressive Morning Brook tonight. Clement stutter steps goes for the corner and scores as a flag comes down well away from where Clement was scampering. I think he knows this one's coming back. This was right there in the offensive line pit, Kirk. Holding offense number 81. 10 yard penalty repeat second He's down. He's made some good plays tonight but the tight end said yeah that one's on me Fumagalli. And just grabs a hold of the jersey of Damon Webb seven you see right there grabs a hold of it. Official right on top of it but what a cut there the jump cuts by Clement before he got to the corner where the block was attempted by Fumagalli but obviously grabs a hold of Damon Webb. And when you grab a jersey like that in the open and then put your hands up like yeah. it wouldn't me that doesn't usually work. Yeah it's almost like a foul in basketball and then it's like hey, no no wasn't me wasn't me. The flag came flying in was spotted from a long way away but again pretty obvious. Moves the ball back to the 14 second and goal. Morning Brooke. Caught up in traffic and able to escape but. Not much there. Back to the line of scrimmage before Rashad Berry corralled him. It's just very rare to see this offense at this stage of the growth of where they are with the offensive line and a redshirt freshman quarterback dropping back. Paul Chris has done a masterful job tonight mixing up the looks, mixing up the formations, the play calling. Jazz Peavy on the jet sweeps have Ohio State a bit on their heels, but the, the drop back puts a lot of pressure on that offensive line to be able to hold him. Hold the defensive line and that pressure out. That time, more of a coverage sack. How risky will Christ and his quarterback be on third and goal back at the 14? Morning Brook. Long throw incomplete. Trying to find Peavy in the corner. Damon Arnett was in coverage, and here comes Andrew Endicott for a field goal. Talked about when they when they drop back. How this this defensive line and obviously on third down they're gonna they're gonna try to get after him. They want to make him feel 
You know, sometimes you don't always come up with a sack, but you can affect him, and Jalen Holmes does just that. And by forcing him to throw that maybe just a little bit early, although it's still a pretty accurate throw, pretty good effort there. Again, Endicott, who was the backup picker at the beginning of the season, was reliable the first time from 46. This is from 32. And Endicott has stepped up because Rafael Gaglianoni was a terrific kicker. There was some concern when he had back surgery. Endicott said, hey, don't worry about that. I, I got this. They've done a really good job with their attack. And up to this point, uh, they've kept Ohio State, I think, a bit off balance with that offensive game plan. Raskowski boots it deep. And Paris Campbell's going to give it a go from two yards in. And he has spun down and shot short. On the 20 yard line. So 243 to work with for Barrett as we give you a backstage pass throughout the weekend to see what goes on behind the scenes. See these big football trucks. Ohio State had the original 18 wheeler to haul around the equipment. These are the unsung heroes of the program. These folks here. Yeah, you, you, as a player, you show up and everything's in your locker. Yeah, these guys do so much work to make sure everything's set up and you're ready to go. The truck weighs 60,000 pounds. Ken Blair Jr. was a Buckeye walk on back in 82, the driver of that truck. Let's see if Ohio State can cut into a seven point Badger lead. They pitch it to Samuel, who has been extremely busy. But now the Badgers starting to focus in on him. Sitchi again with a tackle for the loss. And, and Sitchi actually saw Samuel coming in motion and actually started to take off running before he even had his hands on the ball. Again, anticipating. Looking around, seeing things, and, and just doing their homework and film work to get them ready to play. 48, heck of a player there in the middle. Leading tackler on this team. Again, Barrett from the pocket looking down field for Noah Brown, and he was well, well covered by Sojourn Shelton. He's undersized. He's generously listed at 5'9", but he's a tough guy to beat deep, and he has great technique, doesn't he, that corner? And he's a veteran. I remember he started, we called a game one year, he was a freshman. Has a lot of confidence from Fort Lauderdale, loves to be on an island. He is undersized. You get a good look at it there next to Noah Brown, who's 6'2". But I'll tell you, Chris, Ohio State two years ago had Devin Smith. Last year they had guys like uh, you know, Braxton Miller, but of course Michael Thomas that could get right. downfield. And while Noah Brown had success against Oklahoma, he's more of a physical guy that's going to outfight you for the ball. They're still trying to find that guy that can get downfield. They got to hurry. Urban Meyer says that uh, let's get a timeout here. The play clock was winding down, and he came in determined, Kirk, to get those deep shots to fix the passing game. So far, it hasn't happened. Barrett, six of fourteen, as we check in with Cassidy Hubbard for an update. been a frustrating season so far for last season's Heisman runner up from Stanford. All right Barrett and the Buckeyes need 11 on this third down. Are they going to turn the back ball back over to the Badgers before the break here. I think that's one of the reasons that Urban Meyer not only the play clock going down but Urban Meyer senses the importance here because Paul Chris has probably has confidence with a timeout two minutes to go if they get the ball back they're thinking of at the very least trying to get into field goal range. This is this will be an interesting to see the pass protection. Ohio State against these linebackers. JP JT Barrett knows the ball has got to get out of his hands quickly, especially in an empty set without a back back there to help him out. Watt asking for crowd noise, and they need no encouragement here. And Samuel in the slot. Five receivers for Barrett to choose from. And the Badgers do show some of that pressure. But they back out and Barrett takes off and he is stopped right away by Alec James. Yet another talented edge player. Well, when they go empty, the scouting report says you can anticipate, especially on third down, the possibility of the quarterback draw. Those linebackers are in there, but the linebackers don't even have to make the play. As you said, Alec James, his awareness and being able to get around with his speed and then close in on JT Barrett. Frustrating first half again for Myers offense. And Johnston who's been extremely busy. Wisconsin calling a timeout. Yep. They'll spend the final timeout of the half. 204 to work with. 
AT and T AP top 10 rankings. Alabama as you said rolled on Rocky Top. And C State gave Clemson a scare had a 34 yard field goal to win it in regulation missed wide right and the Tigers made a pick to clinch that victory in overtime and Clemson last night or uh, not Clemson rather Louisville last night sitting there at seven they, they beat Duke 24 14 but not quite the type of game you'd expect from the Cardinals going up against Duke it's part of the it's a marathon I mean you're going to have weeks where you, know, you just have to get through the game for whatever reason you, know, you don't have it that day and you're you're hoping to just be able to execute just enough to get out of there alive and kind of that's kind of what Clemson felt like today. Dabo Sweeney said Lord have mercy we got to learn to hold on to the football and the five turnovers against Louisville they survived that survive four more today but they're living on the edge Clemson. There's Johnston to punt it. Clement way back at his 30. Low kick with backspin and Clement always a fair catch at the 35 yard line. Well the college football playoff national championship trophy presented by Dr. Pepper made him a cameo today. What is this one of the great institutions in any college town anywhere Mickey's Dairy Bar Kirk. Got to enjoy the shake get, today. Yeah you got to have <laughs> I think I had the scrambler uh, for a breakfast yesterday and then you got the milkshakes milkshakes big yeah. time. Yeah. It's just right across the street from Camp Randall and it's uh, I don't think it's changed inside or out in no. about 60 years right No, I think it's like, it's like stepping in a time machine over there. It really is. I, I after game day came on the bus and Billy Bennell the producer of the show tonight he he had about 40 different milkshakes about every flavor you can imagine. Appreciate that Bill, the delivery man extraordinaire. <laughs> That's what the Badgers can do minute 57. 65 yards from the end zone. No timeouts to work with. And this time on the end around, it's PB breaking loose on the right side. Paul Chris says, hey, if it's working, I'm going to go with it again and again. Yeah, and these defensive ends keep collapsing down. And, and not only is he getting outside and, and getting outside of the contain, he's got two big tight ends. They're just blocking undersized defensive backs and just picking up huge yards. And again, at the very least, they're thinking about a field goal. Remember, they get the ball to start the second half. This is a big possession for the Badgers and the Ohio State defense. You know, Chris likes to spin challenges as opportunities. So we were joking with him. What an opportunity slash challenge as a play caller. You're not running the ball that well. Your, your, your receivers are not getting separation. He's found ways to attack this Ohio State defense tonight. Sandbagging us yesterday. <laughs> Ronnie Brick from the pocket delivers far side and coming back is Wheelwright, the Columbus native, finally gets involved in his first catch of the night. And, there, and there's that same route, that same route where they have a matchup that they like with Wheelwright, who's 6'3 and has ability. You can see the quarterback is in great rhythm, puts the ball low and away where Wheelwright can make a play, matched up there against Gary on Conley. He's in the slot, just breaks away from him. Number 15, averaging 15 yards a catch coming in. He called he's called a streak shooter by Chris you want to get him involved early and gets his head in the game and then he can have a big night and they finally do just before halftime threatening again when he delivers and that's for Magali who makes the catch there in field goal range now inside the 30 just can't get over the hands how soft the hands are on the big tight end 6 6 250 pounds has receiver hands. You got a tight end you can catch Kirk and you got an accurate quarterback. You, you can use that right. Yeah he, he is so efficient tonight. And again it all works together 8 of 12 125 yards with a touchdown. He be in motion again. They give it to him again. He gets around the corner again for another first down. And Luke Fickle and Greg Schiano are going to have to make an adjustment time the defensive end and they've been rolling different guys in was was Nick Bosa and he didn't even know he came in to make a play and he couldn't even tell where the ball was it was around him. more carries for the receiver in this first half than he had all season coming in well now what you can do if you're if you're Paul Chris and I'm sure he'll go to it is you can fake that give it to Corey Clement or fake that and you can throw play action pass off of it because now everybody's worried about the running of Jazz Peavy around the edge. All five of his carries have created first downs and they do feed Clement he cuts it and spins back but uh, not much there closing it down was Robert Landers the true freshman and Draymond Jones the BMW halftime report Stan Durrett Mark May Mac Brown coming up.
Scores and highlights, updates from the night games. Minute 16 away. Badgers on second and nine. Send Hornibrook back and he flips it short. Screen. Clement has room. Clement makes a cut. Back inside the five yard line. Badgers in business again. Heck of a time to call the screen. It's just a matter of being able to dump it off. You can see the line letting the defensive line in. And now they're downfield blocking for Magali to tie it in. Almost just shields his guy from getting to Clement. Very, very well timed there by Paul Christ. Only the second catch for Clement this season. The first went for negative yards. That went for 18. And Hornibrook from the pocket is hit as he throws and sails it. That was quick pressure by Sam Hubbard. Ohio State's defense very, very fortunate that they got pressure on Hornibrook because Fumagalli was wide open. But big Sam Hubbard that time gets by Jacob Maxwell, the right tackle and saves Ohio State from giving up a touchdown. The defense looks confused. They're running the crossers and rub routes and Ohio State not doing a good job communicating in coverage and it's freeing up wide receivers. One guy you have to identify if they're going to throw the ball is the big tight end number 81 Fumagalli. Eighth play of the drive coming up. Ogunbowale. Tries to muscle but gets very little again Draymond Jones it'll be third and goal clock running with no Keep timeouts. Yeah, no timeouts Wisconsin's they call that play anticipating maybe the not getting into the end zone they have third down they take a shot here try to get into the end zone and potentially if it doesn't work out you have to settle for a field goal. You cannot take a sack here though now Ohio State's going to spend the time out on defense you with, with the clock winding down if they get to him and sack him you'd have to really hustle the field goal team out there. Well, this is a, a Wisconsin team Kirk that clearly clearly made use of its bye week they came limping back home it was a it was a 14 7 loss on the road to Michigan but the game really wasn't that close Wolverines dominated him this is a, a Wisconsin team that looks more like what we saw early in the season. Well when you play LSU Michigan State and East Lansing and Michigan and Ann Arbor and you have a young offensive line a bye week couldn't have come at a better time. I, I think it allowed them to be able to work on some things. They told us they, they, they were able to self scout and look at what was working what they're struggling with as an offense and I think it really gave their quarterback who took a vicious hit early in that game against Michigan a chance for also him to recover and to keep in mind this is his third start. The way he's played in this first half he looks like a seasoned veteran and I think a lot of that has to do with him but also with the attack that Paul Chris has put together. He's enjoying the fact that he's finally at home the first two starts the East Lansing and the big house he has outplayed JT Barrett so far as the Buckeyes continue to struggle with the pass game. Now what do you call here you want to well, get the ball out quickly. Yeah yeah and, and you know you, you want to give your quarterback a chance to be able to you don't have to panic and, and just get back and get rid of it. But th there does have to be a, kind of an internal clock and awareness especially as good as Ohio State can rush the quarterback that you get back there and it's probably just going to be get back one hitch ball is out and, and again you got to find a way to try to free up the big tight end Fumagalli. They've got the field goal team huddling at the 30 yard line just in case they need to hustle out and set up a, an attempt for Endicott third and goal. Hornibrook fires far side for Ogunbowale, but it's incomplete. See, that's the first throw that we've seen where he wasn't in, like, his balance wasn't there. And I think it's because of what you just said. Don't take a sack. Don't. And I'm sure they told him as he went out, mm -hmm. don't take a sack. And so he gets back there and watch his feet. Watch how different this looks compared to what we've seen. He didn't step through it. He wasn't able to follow through on the, on the throw. And consequently, it affects his accuracy, and the ball kind of sails on it. So Andrew Endicott is trying to make his third field goal in the half. He had one in his life coming in. And I mean high school and college combined. This from 22 yards driven straight through. And Wisconsin Kirk with 313 yards offense. Four long drives in the opening half. And another 10 play drive. And again we said it earlier. But the stop that the Wisconsin defense got with about two minutes to go. Got the ball back to Hornibrook. They drive down almost come up with a touchdown but they get a field goal they're up 10 and again do not forget we come back start this third quarter Wisconsin has the football. That took a minute 42 Ohio State's offense has run 34 plays and they've gained 
just 161 yards. This is the Ohio State drive chart. Four punts and those two field goals. It's the first half if Ohio State ends up not scoring in these last 14 seconds. It'll be the first first half all year that they've not scored a touchdown. Badgers have been a very fast starting defense. They'd only allowed three points all season in the first quarter. That's what the Buckeyes got. But I think Meyer expected to come out and certainly fix the problems they had against the Hoosiers and, and click passing and running tonight so far hasn't happened. But still down just 10. The other thing to keep in mind, even though Ohio State beat Oklahoma, this is the youngest team coming into this year in the entire Power Five. In terms of returning starters, yeah. Three on offense and three on defense. So there's still a young team in these kind of situations trying to figure things out. Endicott, who's been the field goal kicker tonight, is not the regular kickoff guy. It's Rosowski, so he'll just boot it along the ground. And that's going to get away from Campbell, who touches it. And now has to try to do something and will be dropped across the 25 with just nine seconds before halftime. I think J JT Barrett takes a knee or a short run and you get back into halftime. I'm, Urban Meyer's got to be anxious to get in. How much rattles JT? Here. So what, 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 what would the conversation be, you know, if you're Ed Warner, Tim Beck, the yeah, co-offensive coordinators? I, I, don't, I don't think it, it's probably communicating with JT Barrett about what he's seeing. He, nobody has a better look about uh, what's happening and what Wisconsin's doing than, than JT Barrett. Now, Ed Warner's their offensive coordinator. He's upstairs. He's looking down and, and recognizing it. But over the years, Urban Meyer's been credited often about his adjustments. He's got his hands full tonight. We'll see what they do in the second half. JT with more runs than completed passes. This is Weber for, for 10 yards. Second week in a row. Yep. Same issues last week against Indiana. This is a whole totally different deal. Better defense on the road in this environment. Well. The home underdog Badgers hold Ohio State to six in the first half. The fewest a Meyer coach team from Columbus has receiver that's caught more than one pass tonight. He had five in the first half. You think the Buckeyes would pay attention to number 81 here on third down? Tony Brook is swarmed under and sacked. Off the edge was Jalen Holmes with his. Second sack of the year in the Buckeyes third tonight and the entire game plan for Ohio State was to get this offensive line into third and obvious passing situations and Holmes here in the middle of this Ohio State defense really nothing fancy. It's just a, a good combination of power and speed and again it's it's young Bo Benshaw the right guard that continues to struggle on those third down situations before it was Bosa this time it's Holmes. One of those guys that Plays with a chip on his shoulder, eager to prove himself. And then there's the punt, and it is a short one. Fielded on the hop and then dropped. Risky play, and the Badgers say they've got it. Dontre Wilson decided to try to field it on the bounce. And Meyer just drops his head in dismay. It's going to be Ohio State ball. Somehow at the bottom of the pile. Wilson was able to atone for his mistake. Yeah, he just anytime you see it, you see his eyes, his eyes dip down to see where they were coming from, and obviously a big time no no. You take your eye off the ball, even though you think you're going to be able to secure it. Right there, he right here he peeks up to see who's coming down. You either let that go, or you just get out of there. You cannot afford to put yourself in such a dangerous position. Fortunate. Still no turnovers tonight. Yeah, he was fortunate to get the ball back. Barrett feeds Weber. He powers for a nice game. Sam, what did Urban Meyer have to say uh, coming out of halftime? Frustrated at halftime, just like he is right now. Chris told me there wasn't a single area of football where his guys were doing what they were supposed to be doing. And he knows he's got some young guys who haven't been in this position before, wants to see how they respond. I asked him where the opportunity was. He said it's downfield, it's underneath, it's all there. We just have to execute. All right, thanks. Well, Weber, who came in. The Big Ten lead in rushing yards so far this season, able to get eight that time. Barrett rolling out and decides to keep it and will be stopped near the marker by T.J. Edwards. 
looks like he may have come up with a first down. That play looked a little indecisive there with JT Barrett rolling out and even even once he was almost at the line of scrimmage and beyond the line of scrimmage still kind of looking downfield that he almost cost himself the first down they did give yeah. it to him Urban Meyer very active up at the top he's hunched over there right near the line of scrimmage there it runs it toward the boundary breaks a tackle shows that leg strength and dives forward. Not the fastest guy, but tough to tackle. Well, it, it, it's it's that he's so physical, as you said. We talked about that this morning on game day. Is, you know, that you've heard Urban Meyer from time to time compare him to a Tim Tebow. A lot of that has to do more with the intangibles. But Tim didn't necessarily explode when he was running the ball, but he'd run over top of guys. And he's not, JT's not quite that physical, but he does bring some physicality. We're able to run through some arm tackles. Definitely not contact averse from the pocket. Barrett flips it underneath, and Paris Campbell makes the catch. First down at the 35 yard line. That was the first time that Ohio State gave JT Barrett some time to throw. And the reason is Wisconsin, instead of bringing those linebackers, look at this, there's only three guys. This time they have five underneath to try to take away the underneath routes. Campbell does a nice job of finding the hole there in that zone. Take it to Samuel and Barrett. Took a look downfield, nobody open, and now takes off. JT weaving inside the 15-yard line. Same thing, rushing three, a little bit of a delayed blitz from the middle linebacker, TJ Edwards, but playing zone, everybody covered. Great recognition that time by JT Barrett, deciding to hold on to it, found a crease there, and took off for big yards. Yeah, you got 22 of them. Option look, keeping all the way and knocked down after a two yard gain. And here comes the rain. All of a sudden, the rain that was forecast arrives here early in the third quarter. Will not make it easier for the quarterbacks. Talk to both the coaches on the field about potential wet conditions, and both telling me that they're very comfortable with the mechanics and, and their quarterbacks having big hands and being able to hold on to the football. We'll see if that ends up playing out. The fans are screaming for the raincoats and then some just don't care. The students <laughs> happy to get wet. They've been they've been prepping for the game since eight o'clock this morning. <laughs> it's Samuel in motion on second and nine now reverses direction. Barrett roll in that way delivers into the end zone intercepted a diving pick by Dakota Dixon. He has been a big play maker for this team interception in the win over LSU. Forced to fumble against the Spartans. Well, just when we talk about the conditions, I think this ball just comes out of his hand. He has an open receiver there, and he just missed it. Ball floats over top of the potential receiver, James Clark, right his in the left arm as his body turns. Ball slips out of the hands of JT Barrett. Watch the left forearm turn and get underneath, preventing the ball. That's a great effort from hitting the surface. It's a good interception there by Dixon. So the ball with the rain which was short lived by the way it's basically stopped it, it lasted just long enough to affect that throw by Barrett in the game's first turnover Clement hit for a loss there flying in was Jalen Holmes who's been active tonight well, Jalen Holmes with some penetration Ohio State remember they've made adjustments at halftime They've come back out here and the defensive line has, has really done a nice job of getting things established up front. You see that Nick Bosa playing more and more. He's playing right now at the left defensive end along with another true freshman Robert Landers out of Dayton Wayne. Didn't have too many Buckeyes on his helmet yet. He'll get a bunch before he's done. Talented freshman. Play action, Hornybrook backpedaling, and Fumagalli was very, very well covered by Damon Webb. Nowhere to go with it. And Bosa was chasing him again. And I was just going to say, Bosa applies the pressure, but give Damon Webb a lot of credit. This is the same play that gave them a problem to not only open the game, but throughout most of the first half, this time completely taking it away 
is Damon Webb. Now he's 5'10", but he's a former corner. Really good in coverage, and even though Fumagalli is at 6'6", play really didn't have a chance. Great coverage by Webb. Now you put that line and a young quarterback here into that obvious passing situation. Need 11. Hornibur pressured again. It's a screen dumped off, and they are all over Ogunbowale. Jerome Baker stopped him in an excellent defensive series for the Buckeyes. And second one in a row. Holmes gets in. They're trying to set up anticipating pressure, but the eyes that time by Jerome Baker, guy that really exploded onto the scene this year, having a chance to replace Josh Perry. Big interception against Oklahoma, but he felt that, and the offensive line trying to get out there to block him. By the time they saw him, with his speed, he was already by him and into the backfield. Wisowski in the punt. And making the catch, no fair catch made that time by Wilson, and he has dropped in Wisconsin territory at the 48-yard line. Again, some, some hesitation from the returner. Barrett off the pick, back in business with good field position. Best starting field position of the night for J.T. Barrett. Two back look of neither side of the quarterback, and they pitch it off to Samuel, who's pursued instantly. That's just excellent defense. Leo Musso, the senior safety, arrived in a hurry, and Zach Bond helped clean him up. Well, that, that's great defense, and it's also tremendous speed here by Leo Musso. Watch how he runs. You're talking about Curtis Samuel, one of the faster backs, not just in the Big Ten, but the, con the country. But the angle that he took prevented the cutback, and Musso, who is a, a great athlete coming out of high school, high school quarterback, a high school tailback, shows that speed there. He had 5,500 rushing yards in high school. 87 touchdowns. Samuel in the flat gets a couple of blocks and knifes between them to the 40 yard line. Third and short now. Yeah, they brought the linebackers these last couple plays, something they got away from the previous series. Remember, we talked about rushing three and dropping eight. This time, Justin Wilcox, the defensive coordinator, says, Let's get back to our roots. Let's get these outside linebackers, 42 and five. Let's turn them loose. Barrett again running all the way and picks his way for a first down. He was slammed down hard by Sitchie, but forward progress should move the sticks. I'm telling you, it is tough sledding. It is physical. You're going to run the football. JT Barrett carried it 26 times last year, last week against Indiana. There's, there's Watt lowering the boom there on the tight end, trying to make a block. But what Marcus did you tell us? We're going to put him in the ice bath. If he runs it that many yeah, times, but he, put him in you the asked ice bath. him that, and he was like, eh, you know. It wasn't, it wasn't that bad, but it's a different game tonight. Barrett buys a bunch of time and loops the ball to the end zone. Jump ball incomplete. That was McLaren going high for it. Couldn't collect it. It's actually a heck of a throw. Being patient, waiting for, you know, it's, you're improvising. These are things that are hard to really practice. And with an entire new group of wide receivers, you got to make a play. The ball is thrown right where it needs to be. And again, it's a young sophomore. Look at the shot. He knows that that hit is coming from Sitchi, but he waited and waited until McLaren had a chance to go up and make a play. If he goes up and holds on to the ball, it's a touchdown. Still have yet to connect on one of those deep shots tonight. That was a first down throw. Now it's a second down handoff to Samuel. Follows his blockers, picks up about 10. Great you, knew, block. you knew he was going to be a big part of the offense tonight, Kirk, and already Samuels carried it 11 times, caught three pat leading receiver and rusher. But he, he's the offense, he and JT Barrett. I think what Urban Meyer wants to see is this offense grow as some other players get involved in taking the pressure off of him. JT, who's also been busy again, stopped short. Sitchi again on the tackle. Well, it, it starts with JT Watt setting the edge. Forcing JT Barrett to try to come underneath, and that's where Sitchi is able to make the play. That combination of 42 on the edge and 48 in the middle, it's been active. TJ introducing himself to JT once again. Watch him set the edge and then watch Sitchi clean it up. JT Barrett would love to get outside, but the edge is set. He's forced inside, and here comes the middle linebacker able to clean it up. Meanwhile, Kirk Jamarco Jones, the junior left tackle for Ohio State, is being looked at by the trainers. A chance to check in with Cassidy Hubbard for an update. And 
Cassidy, thank you. It's fourth down, fourth and one. Ohio State Interesting. goes for it a lot on fourth down. Yeah, yeah, I mean, but it, they don't have nights like this very often, so maybe that's why they go for it. You know, looks like he rolls his ankle right there, just stepping on the foot of Isaiah Prince, the it's other a tackle. Freak injury. Yeah. Wow. But again, interesting call for Urban Meyer because if you kick a field goal and you make it, it's back to a one possession game. Mm -hmm. But you're right, his, his MO is to go for it, and that's what he's going to do. They need almost a full yard. Remember, Wisconsin, one of the best defenses in the country at third and fourth and short. Probably need to get wide to have a chance. In motion in Wilson. Give it to Weber and he plows for a first down inside the 25. Good forward drive by the freshman tailback. Yeah, great power by by Weber, but how about the offensive line that time? Pat Elfline, the center, and Billy Price, the right guard, the two veterans leading the way for the powerful Mike Weber. That's some, that's that's a, a heck of an accomplishment against that defensive front. One first down, Weber again, and very quick penetration. That, that's Sitchi, the former walk on again, just flying in there, throws his body. You, you know, he's, ball carriers. he's one of those guys, and anybody out there that's played linebacker can really appreciate this. When he brings up film study and looking at the, the offensive linemen, especially the guards, amount of pressure they put on their hands, and if they're sitting back in their stance or they're sitting forward in their stance, it tips him off on being able to know where the ball is going to be going. So it helps him anticipate where to attack. And that's a great example there that last play. The dude does love the details, doesn't he? Yeah. How to play the position. Fake it to Weber. Barrett sidesteps pressure, delivers into traffic. And that was Dakota Dixon who just had the pick. A chance at another one. And Derek Tindall on the Excuse outside. Me, Tindall, yeah. Yeah. Tindall the outside, man to man. Leave your corners on an island. They've got to be able to hold up. You could see the look there. He actually missed his tight end, Marcus Ball, who had his man beat. He locks in on Noah Brown. Ball's thrown behind. Tindall almost jumped it. Third and ten. As loud as it's been tonight. Barrett pressured. Escapes. Delivers far side and a catch made for a first down by Brown. Let's see if they give him forward progress where the catch is made. Now they're going to spot it short. It's going to be fourth down again. Again, we yard. just talked about fourth and one and how Urban Meyer, he likes to go for it. A lot of times he likes to go with tempo. They're going for it again. Again, they give it to Weber, and he fights hard again, able to pick up the first down just through strength and will. That, that, that was Mike Weber. Last fourth and one was the offensive line along with Weber. This is Mike Weber wanting to get the first down. Look at the penetration. They stop him short right there. There's Sitchi once again. Elfline helping out to push, but that was the power of the big running back, Mike Weber, to pick that up. 12 play in this drive. And now Barrett play action for the end zone. A battle for the ball. A flag comes out as Brown was interfered with by Musso. Well, he was left outside there one on one with Shelton, the veteran, the senior. He has an advantage on size. He got behind him, Chris. And be when you get behind him and Shelton Pass doesn't. Interference. Defense number eight. Foul occurred in the end zone by rule the ball's placed at the two yard line. Automatic first down. Again, we talk about this all the time because he's beaten. Watch his eyes, watch his headgear. He's behind him right now. Now he never turns around. A lot of contact. Two officials actually make the call. Gives Ohio State the ball. That right tackle, by the way, that time looks like he moved before the ball was snapped. They got away with one there. Here's the progressive pylon, Ken. You knew they were going to take a, a red zone shot to Brown against the short corner, but Shelton. Tough competitor. So now, ball at the two yard line. First and goal. Weber muscles down near the goal line. Stop just short.
They're trying to get guys in and off the field. And oh. now sprinting down to, to call a timeout. They, they did try to get the some fresh bodies on there on second and goal. And Badgers will have to spend one here. Hard to do when Ohio State doesn't substitute. Chris showing some quickness down there to the corner. Buckeyes a methodical drive trying to cash in good field position and cut into the lead. Run, obviously. Badgers unable to stop Barrett who barrels in for Ohio State's first touchdown tonight. And they do cap a grinding 47 yard march to the end zone. When in doubt, you follow the veteran Pat Elfline, the senior center, and Billy Price, the junior. Both these guys have played for the last few years. And Elfline that time, a heck of a block, and being able to turn the nose guard to open up a little bit of a running lane for Barrett. Here's Durbin. Yeah, Elfline for sure, one of the candidates for the Remington Award, the top center in the country. Yeah, watch him in the middle. Watch how he's able to just, just do enough here to be able to get a push there and open up a nice it's also Billy Price the right guard picks up Sitchie. They know they know that it's coming. You see the safety have to try to come in there Dixon but Sitchie was picked up by by Billy Price and Elfline also picked up the nose guard and GT Barrett gets into the end zone for Ohio State to cut it to three. And you're right the guts of Urban Meyer. You get into field goal range, you got a shot to get it within a one possession game. The offense hasn't necessarily been blowing people off the ball. He takes the chance, believes in his guys, and twice and ends up paying off for him to get a touchdown and pull it in three. You get a feeling whatever was said at halftime, Meyer frustrated the locker room. It is it is helped motivate this Ohio State team. The defense has played very well after the break, and now the offense finally finds the end zone. And then they return. Out short of the 20 yard line. We check back in with Cassidy. Wow, former Ohio State offensive coordinator Tom Herman narrowly dodges a second loss for his Cougars. That loss to Navy may have taken. Some of the wind out of their sails there, but see what Paul Chris does to adjust. Remember, it's been a slow start to this second half for the Wisconsin offense. Honeybrook rolls out and delivers to the reliable Jazz Peavy on the far sideline. Nice game. I think more than anything, Ohio State has kind of cranked up the intensity at the at the point of attack at the line of scrimmage with the defensive line. Winning the battle and the other thing is they, they were able to get Hornybrook into some obvious passing situations a lot more third and long where they can kind of put him in awkward and difficult positions to be able to execute against their defense and their secondary. You get eight on first down here comes PV in motion again but they feed Clement who barrels forward for a first down at the 29. First and ten is such a big part of Wisconsin either having success or not and they have done a good job of mixing up their looks tonight on their first downs they've had 15 first down calls nine of them have been run six have been passed what doesn't show up in that stat is how many times they've run PV around on the mm -hmm. on the jet sweep to kind of go along with that so they're trying to keep Ohio State off balance they need to stay on schedule on second and third another first down throw Hornibrook lobs it out intercepted coming up to make the pick was Gary and Conley who read the quarterback and closed in and the Buckeyes back in business first turnover for Wisconsin well he, he because he is a touch passer he floats the ball here and he kind of times things up this time he he put it see how he puts it up in the air what I don't think he, did, he didn't expect was Conley sitting there in zone. I think he was expecting man to man and Conley jumps the route and I think he fooled the freshman quarterback as he gets hit right after he throws the ball by Michael Hill. So Conley with his second interception of the season the leader of that secondary that, that calls itself BIA best in America perhaps haven't lived up to that yet tonight for this big play. 
sets up Barrett at the 38 final two minutes of the third quarter. This crowd which was once really raucous now anxious Samuel direct snap Wilson takes a little flip and all that window dressing gains a yard. Not only does it gain just a yard it almost was a, a loss of about 15 or 20 yards or maybe a recovery that ball almost goes over the head of Curtis Samuel he, he did a good job just to be able to come up with a football let alone get it to Dontre Wilson. The guy you're snapping it to in that case isn't quite as tall as JT and almost got away from number four you're right. Now Samuel lined up to the right of Barrett in the flat he gets it. Tries to cut back and lowers his head. It'll be third down and they'll need about five. Go back to that previous play. Look at that. Look at that effort there. Just gets his right hand up. Gives you an idea of his athletic ability, hand eye coordination. And now you get back to that last series. Is Urban Meyer thinking about four down territory? Does he call this third down play, thinking about the possibility of being in a fourth and short? Final minute of the quarter. Barrett drops back and delivers high strike first down still fighting is Brown down near the 10 yard line. Watch this throw and watch how he puts it between three defenders of Wisconsin. You've got great coverage there. That ball has to be thrown if it's if it's late by even a half of a second. The ball is batted away but he squeezed it in there for the first down. Wisconsin trying to run some subs on they're still very confused. There's still confusion. And Ohio State say. to a field goal attempt which if good would tie the game. Or can the Buckeyes who trailed all night make their first lead. Remember they've had success with Noah Brown this year on fades. But the time running out we have to spend the time out here. They've tried to pick on him. They got an interference call on Shelton to eventually set up the touchdown last time. We'll see what they've got cooking after this timeout. Badgers get a running start. Six, he came in, flushed out Barrett, but he breaks free and scores. J.T. Barrett runs for the touchdown, and Ohio State has its first lead as he dodged a sack. Well, they brought pressure from Sitchi and Watt, and when they weren't able to pick up J.T. Barrett, there's nobody left on the other side because you can see the corners locked up with Noah Brown. Nobody left. And a big touchdown there by J.T. Barrett. So Ohio State marches 38 yards after the interception from Gary and Conley. Virtually the entire second half he grabbed Watt around the waist, a, a kind of a dance move on that touchdown, which helps spring Barrett. He grabs him right there. Barrett gets around it because you could, what did you see T.J. Watt flop because of how hard he was held there. Ogunbowale from the end zone. Good coverage stop at the 20. Samantha? Yeah, Chris, I wanted to observe Alex Hornerbrook when he came off after the interception. He did the exact same thing he's done the entire game, which is something I've never seen before. He doesn't sit down or really interact with teammates. He warms up the entire time. And I'm not just talking about tossing the ball around a little bit. I'm talking 30 yards, throwing darts on the sideline the entire time. I talked to Joel Stave because he was down here observing. Asked him if he'd ever seen it. He said no. And it actually could end up being a problem when he goes to schools that don't really have much space in between the fans and the bench. So something something interesting. I'm not really sure what the reason is. Sam, I, I've never seen that myself. Usually you sit down, you're talking with the line, you're talking with Running backs, coaches going over adjustments. Interesting approach. Move it up inside to try to get the quick hitter to the fullback. Badgers got to get the offensive rhythm going, Kirk, after that impressive showing. 313 in the first half, 11 yards in the third quarter. Yeah, you always hear that tail of two halves, and so far it has been that. Ohio State has cranked up the intensity. As I said the last time they had the ball, the defensive line has done a very good job, not just defending the run, but also rushing the quarterback. A 
Buckeyes showing some pressure on second and seven. Hornibrook flips it off. It's a screen. They go back to Fumagalli, but he has been well covered after halftime. Malik Hooker came up to lower the boom. It'll be third and long. You're right, Chris. I, we talked to a Hooker on Thursday and asked him, you know, you're a great athlete, but do you like to hit people? He said, I kind of <laughs> smiled and said, yeah. I, I said, would you rather hit or make an interception? He's like, I, I want to come up and hit people. The acceleration, how quickly he's able to close the ground there and take away that space. The offensive lineman with that speed just didn't have any chance to block him. Great instincts. Hooker was a guy who was an elite basketball player. Didn't play high school football until his junior year. On third down, Hornibrick for Peavy makes the catch into Ohio State territory inside the 45. He beat Damon Arnett. What a clutch throw. What a throw right on the money. And the great thing for Wisconsin is he gets back and the ball's out. He had just enough time. He'll get a little pressure off to his right. But you can see that the backup corner, the nickelback Arnett, gets a step behind Peavy, who's got great downfield speed. But it's the accuracy and getting back to throwing in rhythm for Alex Hornibrook's the reason that works. And getting back to what he did in his opening start of his career against Michigan State when he was six for six on third down. Most of them third and long. We got 36 on third and nine. Clement spins back. He could not escape Raquan McMillan's tackle there. That, that's the answer to Sam's question about him throwing on a sideline. It's for opportunities like that. That was an accurate throw. And, that, and that's really what Paul Chris told us was they had a quarterback battle. When they broke camp they, and they got to LSU, they started Bart Houston, the senior, who's been a backup to Joel Stave. And eventually, Hornibrook won the job. And Paul Chris telling us really it was the consistency with his accuracy is the reason he's now the starting quarterback. Yeah, it came off the bench in the Georgia State game and this offense really struggled and that's when Houston lost his job. Clement breaking free gets a block and muscles out inside the 25 and the Badgers threatening again. Watch the left tackle here Ram check. Watch him push down the defensive lineman Jones and it opened that right up and not only that you've got big linemen pulling around. And the big tight end that time, Steffes, with nobody really to block. But that's the first time in the second half that we've seen that power running game of Clement and his offensive ability to run the football. Yeah, you got 20 there. Clement now has rushed for 143 tonight. That time they bring TV in motion, but Clement busts up the middle, as you suggested. They use him as a decoy and run up the middle. Yeah, it, it catches the eyes of the linebackers. It slows them down, and, and when you... You bring him around like that, it, all it takes is just a little bit of hesitation to help those linemen get up to the linebackers, McMillan, and also Worley. Good blocks and another good play call, using that as a decoy there to open that up. The Badgers, who had led all night, fall behind by four, but threatening to reclaim the lead now inside the red zone. On second and two, Clement. And not escape. Lost a yard as Sam Hubbard strung it out. That's a play that affected them. They, they were not setting the edge. This time Sam up Hubbard does play. set the edge. Watch him fight to get outside there. Dealing with a block from Maxwell but does not give up on the play. Keeps his outside shoulder and hand free to be able to get out there and make that play. Now Clement is going to come off on this third down play. Third and three. Buckeyes make some substitutions. Badgers need three yards. Was shaken up at the end of that run. Ogun Buale spelling him. They snap it at two. Quarterback flips it off inside and they convert the third down little shovel pass to Fumagalli. Again, this is this is a well-designed play, and they've not called it all night. Fumagalli just following the right guard, Benshaw around. Because I like that too. It's a low risk play, right? If he's incomplete. Yeah, absolutely. It's an incomplete yeah. pass if it doesn't work out. A little shovel pass. Taekwon Lewis unable to get down there and well timed there by Paul Chris. Hasn't shown it the whole game. Fourth quarter. You pull it out and Ohio State not quick enough to react on third down. Clement's still out of there. He may have gotten need in the back on that tackle. So it's Ogun Buale in the eye formation. He's got it. He's not quite the physical runner that Clement is. Works hard for a couple of yards. Hill and Lewis combined on the stop. Yeah, really known for his third down ability to play on third down. But 
You know, he, he is still a guy that I think can run the ball between the tackles. Now we get a look at the freshman. Bradrick Shaw can, comes in. He's kind of a slasher at 6'1", 211 pounds. A taller back. He's out of Texas. He hasn't touched the ball tonight. And this is the first carry, and Bradrick Shaw he shows some power and some burst and a nice gain down inside the five. It'll be third and very short. Yeah, they think he could really be a, a star in the future. But the offensive line really watch the center Dieter. Does a nice job there. Also the left guard. That's actually the left guard that time. Dieter is actually able to get up to the linebacker. So Shocker does his job one carry. Now Clement comes back in for the third and two. It's actually a, more like a yard and a little bit. Three tight ends. And behind all that beef, it's the fullback plowing in for a touchdown. Austin Ramish and the Badgers back on top. They love that play, the quick hitter to the fullback, don't they? And they executed very well. Yeah, power running teams love to be able to get that quick dive play in. And Ramish has at 250 pounds the leg drive if he gets challenged. That time he really didn't get challenged. Endicott now tries to convert the PAT, make it a three-point margin. And he does. So Wisconsin, after falling behind Kirk, goes 81 yards and he Kowski's kick once again is very deep. A Pacific Life game summary, a quarterback comparison. JT with a couple of rushing touchdowns, 11 of 22 passing. Hornybrook, after throwing that interception, impressive, converting that third and long on the last touchdown drive. Yeah, he has played, uh, again, very, very well tonight. You can see at the bottom there, JT Barrett also has carried the football 18 times after a 26 carry game last week for a couple touchdowns tonight as well and now you put the ball back in his hands down three with under eight minutes to go in the game on the road see what he can do JT already was the career touchdown pass leader at Ohio State and now has tied Braxton Miller's school record for touchdowns responsible for 88 total and he'll no doubt add to that it's Weber Knocked down at the 30 yard line after a five yard game. Can these outside linebackers, we're seeing one of them have to come off the field right now. Gary Dooley. He is not 100% right now. Number five out there trying to play. And Barrett throws near side to low completion to a sliding McLaren for a first down. You know, these receivers have been challenged by Urban Meyer to make plays like this. Go down and make a play on the football. Kirk, they get Dooley out of there, was struggling with his right leg. Samuel. Cuts it back, follows a block, and breaks free. Curtis Samuel into Wisconsin territory. It was Weber. His backfield made it through a big block, and there is a flag down now. Yeah, you see Weber helping him lead the way. A two-back look. Nice block by Paris Campbell. Weber takes, Coda, take, takes care of Dakota Dixon, but there is a flag down. Holding. Offense. Number 25. Well, they got Weber, Kirk. Down. Yeah, he kind of grabbed Dixon and threw him to the ground. I think that's what they had to have called near the. He made good contact at the beginning, but then at the end, he just grabbed a hold of him and threw him down. Good contact. Then he grabs the jersey there. And there's the throwdown. So, number 25's penalty negates a 25-yard gain. If you put those two in the backfield together. It's a little bit of a different look and it opens up the playbook because there's a variety of different things you can do because of how skilled both of them are running and catching. 
Badgers come after Barrett. Protection holds up for a moment, and now JT trying to scramble and is dropped down by Sitchi one more time. Scrappy number 48. That Mohawk. Yeah, he, he kind of kids about, you know, he's a playmaker. He leads the team in tackles. He's all over the football. But he kind of, you were kind of talking to him about what kind of athlete you are because he's made some plays this year against the pass as well. And he kind of kind of poor mouths himself. And got, you know, not that great athlete. I have to do it in different ways. But I'll tell you, when the ball, when he's between these white lines and the ball's in play, he, he has football speed. Yeah, I don't care what he clocks on the 40. He, he's I don't fast either. when he's the, chasing when, guys. When the ball's out there, he makes plays. Barrett now with a lot of time. They rush only three. JT's got all day. Taking a downfield shot for Dontre Wilson, who collects it. Finally, finally, the Buckeyes go downtown and connect. But it, but it was a good job. Uh, again, you've got a broken play. He just gave a little bit of a look and a hand wave to Dontre Wilson, who's one on one with a linebacker. I mean, Bond's trying to run with him and stay with a much quicker Dontre Wilson. This is a great throw and an accurate throw away from the defender over the outside shoulder to Dontre Wilson. You get 43 yards, and, and Bond was the guy in because Dooley was out injured, so they go after a backup linebacker. Barrett again, plenty of time. Throws for the end zone again, looking for Dontre Wilson, overshot it. And Bond again was out there covering him. They had that mismatch. Uh, that's what they asked the, these outside linebackers to do is a lot of times they're rushing the quarterback and blitzing. You see that a lot with T.J. Watt and Garrett Dooley, but they're also asked because they have to stay balanced is to drop in coverage. I mean, it, it's a tough position to play. It takes a unique, talented athlete with some size to be able to play that position. But that time Barrett actually had Wilson earlier wide open. If he would have seen him, he was just looking off to his right. A.J. Hill, the receiver, motions into the backfield, but Barrett keeps it. And how about J.T. Barrett on this drive? It's been a struggle, Kirk. Passing game still hasn't clicked. He's been a, a physical, busy runner, but you expect a leader like this to take over when Ohio State needs a drive. Absolutely. Game's on the line late in the ball game. He now has carried the football 20 times tonight for this Ohio State offense. Five to, here on third down. Trying to manufacture different ways to make this happen. Curtis Samuel checking back into the game for KJ Hill. And also we get Garrett Dooley back into the game. Play clock is winding down. Both teams made substitutions. You gotta hurry. Just get it away. Barrett keeps it. Cuts it back and is just brought down on the edge by Leo Musso. Made a huge tackle to prevent a first down, maybe a touchdown. That's a heck of a play to be able to not only make the tackle, but Marcus Ball, the tight end, has him blocked. I mean, he is a big man trying to block him. He uses his speed to undercut the big tight end to be able to get away from him and then keep JT Barrett short for the first down. Jim Leonard, the, the NFL great, who was the scrappy ex Badger coach of the DB, says Musa is their best tackler as a defensive back, and he made his coach. Looks smart that time. So Durbin on with a 31 yarder and he knocks it through. Buckeyes 23. And we'll take a knee. And Alex Hornibrook, who spent the entire Ohio State drive throwing, as Sam suggested, goes back to work. Yeah, he, he, this last drive was a great mix. They were able to run the football. The offensive line does a heck of a job. Throughout this, he made a couple big throws. They mixed in a variety of tailbacks, trying to keep everybody fresh. And here's that right side of the offensive line with that fullback dive to Austin Ramish for the touchdown to give him the time, the lead. And the Buckeyes have gotten it even. And now this is this is what you train all off season for. This is what it's all about for both these teams. This is what you want. Table is set. Now you got to go out and do it. Badgers have shown mostly a methodical offense before tonight, but they have been plenty explosive. 357 to work with plenty of time. Clement stutter step. Well he looks like a completely different running back tonight doesn't he. He looks like he did two years ago. He's just a lot more patient. He's fighting through some injuries tonight too. And he again last year injured most of the year. But he is not at 100 percent. But the patience most importantly is back in his running style. He missed a game and a half this year with an ankle injury and it appears to be less than full speed right now. The other thing is it's nice to be able to run where you have a little bit of room. I mean he, he has not had a lot of room to run the last 
couple games. Ogunbowale makes a little cut and fights for a first down across the 35. Known as a finesse guy, but there he's showing a little bit of power. He's got to. He's got to pick up the slack if if Clement is hobbled. Most guys who go from cornerback to running back, you don't figure they're going to be a real physical player. <laughs> right. Tight formation. They hand it to Ogunbowale, who gets a little crease, gives a stiff arm, cuts it back, and you see the elusiveness. That's more what he's known for. Eight-yard game. Yeah, but again, that offensive line on a first and ten run, controlling things up front. They do a nice job there on, on a, you know, you're pulling a guard, you're pulling a tight end, kind of an H back around. The right side needs to collapse the Ohio State defensive front, which is exactly what they did, giving those pullers enough room to come around. And then look at that eight or nine yard gain again on first and ten. Inside of two and a half to play in regulation. Clement is back in there. And he's got the first down into Ohio State territory. And they are moving toward Andrew Endicott range the kicker who has been steady tonight as a fill in for Caglianone. He's been all you could ask for. Can he win it with one more field goal? Clock becomes a factor now under two minutes Ohio State with two timeouts. Badgers also with two timeouts they're going to take their time now with as much success as they've had moving the ball here in these first four plays. Clement again cuts it back a flag comes in and what would be you figure the holding zone and that could be crucial. And they got Brett Connors I think the center here for a hold. Holding. Offense, number 64, 10 yard penalty, repeat, first down. There have been some holds tonight that have not been called in crucial plays that when they did uh, spot Connors. And, and for Paul Christ, that, that drive had momentum. It had, it had everything that you wanted because you had Ohio State on their heels and you're moving closer and closer into field goal range. Now, minute 38. A critical error by the center on the holding call and now not only do you lose ground but you lose that momentum and that rhythm that they had established on that drive. You have to believe that Wunderbrook's going to have to put the ball up in this series first and 20. Steps up, has time, delivers across the middle. Peavy knocked down at the 50. Nice tackle by Malik Hooker. Rodgers get back eight yards. Yeah, again, Malik Hooker is one of the better safeties. You're going to watch. Watch how quickly he reacts to this, and watch the closing speed after he sees where the route is. Look how quickly he comes in and collapses down on that. But big yards there for Wisconsin. Again, they're trying to get into field goal range here as that clock gets closer to a minute. Winnie Brick down the sidelines, a risky throw, diving attempt, picked off again by Conley. His second interception tonight snuffs out the Wisconsin drive, and the young quarterback pays the price for that decision. This is a clinic on how to play man to man in college football. Watch how he trusts his eyes right now, he turns around. At that point, he's almost a wide receiver. Tremendous athletic ability to go up and make the catch, but it was him reading the eyes of the receiver, Wheelwright, getting his own head turned around, and then running stride for stride with Wheelwright. This is just exceptional. They're going to take a close look to see if the ball touched the ground. It looked like his right elbow, right arm got underneath the ball. This is going to stand as a pick. What an incredible. I know that all that, that good stuff you tell me about technique, but the catch is oh, yeah, just a crazy catch. Yeah. And Ohio State's had a few of those this year. Hooker had one earlier, too. Just the right arm. Kind of like what we talked about with Dixon, who had the interception. See the right arm under the ball prevents it from hitting the surface. It did pop up, and that's what the crowd is ooing about when they showed the replay on the screen here. 
So that holding penalty that pushed him back made it first and 20 kind of threw him off schedule Kirk as you yep. suggested it was ended up being more than a momentum killer ended up being crucial. Yep. If this interception stands. Another look Conley collects it in the right hand grabs it and now does he control it again if he's he could have popped up when his arm hit the yeah. ground they may not have enough to turn this over no. and that could be the play that sends us to overtime and still Steven Beckman looking at it Dave Kataya how, how did you see this if you were in his position well I saw it the same way you guys did I don't think there's enough to overturn it the left arm is under OK the ball might hit the ground but there's not enough there to change the call from what I've seen in my opinion. We'll see. If the interception is overturned it would be third and 12 for Wisconsin at midfield. And if it is an interception, the ball is on the 20 yard line. After further review, in the process of the player going to the ground to make the catch, the ball hit the ground. He lost control of it. Therefore, it was an incomplete pass. It'll be third down and 12 yards to go wow. at the 50 yard line. All right, so Beckman seeing it differently than you did, Dave, and it will be Wisconsin ball back at midfield, a third and 12. So it puts Hornybrook still in a position to be able to get points on the board but now it's not just about Hornybrook Chris it's about the offensive line giving him a chance and you know Paul Paul Chris understands that he knows that Ohio State's going to come after him you wonder if they might try to roll him away kind of move that launch point a little bit to give him a little bit more time to get away from that pressure see Nick Bosa coming in all their pass rushers coming into the game Jalen Holmes Sam Hubbard. Tyquan Lewis all into the lineup. They, they don't call it, but it is kind of like a cheetah package, isn't it? There's a whole bunch of defensive ends in there. Ohio State looks like they're in man to man. Dropped out. Tony Britt rolling away from the pressure and now flips it short, but behind Ogunbowale, it was Jalen Holmes in hot pursuit, and now it's fourth down. Ohio State showed man to man and then dropped out of it at the snap and played zone. They felt pretty confident that they could give this young quarterback a lot of different looks especially in that third down package show him one thing before the snap drop to the other. That time just great coverage downfield. Wisowski into punt. Dontre Wilson back. It's been an adventure tonight for him. You'd think he would just. Make the safe play, make the fair catch. It was a man right in his face, and he does collect it at the 13 yard line. 41 seconds to play. Cassidy Hubbard along after the game with a Ford wrap up show. I think Urban Meyer and his, his play callers, Ed Warner, well, got, that content to just play this conservative and look for overtime. You've got two timeouts. I think you call the first play, and you see. See how successful or, or if it's a struggle and then I think that dictates maybe your your uh, your attitude on the rest of the drive. Ohio State is capable of moving the ball down the field pretty quickly with JT Barrett but it, tonight obviously it's been a challenge against this group of linebackers and against this entire defense. They've done a very very good job of containing the big play from Ohio State. They're going to have to move the ball 50 55 yards to get in field goal range for Tyler Durbin. As you said two timeouts that may answer some questions here as they hand the ball off to Weber who was hammered after a short gain by Sheehy. And that kind of that kind of tells you yeah, yeah. That, that tells you where Ohio State he's saying let's we got it to overtime and we're going to play some extra football tonight. Now Clemson on their home field needed overtime to survive that was number three number two on the road tonight. If they are to stay undefeated, we'll have to do it in overtime. Okay, gentlemen, this is an extra period. Each team gets one timeout for overtime period. They do not carry over. We're going to do a coin toss right now. This will be the only coin toss we do. If you win the toss, you have the option of going on offense first, defense first, or selecting the side of the field on which you would like to play. Ohio State, you are the visitor. Please give me your call. Tails. Tails is called. It is heads. Wisconsin, you won the toss. Defense. 
Wisconsin wins the toss and elects to go on defense. Which end would you like to play at? Yeah, okay. GT says right, we're going to go point ahead. away Turn from the student section way, and go down and play that end, but uh, Buckeye offense will get the ball first. Yeah, we'll get away from the bleacher creatures. We'll try to head down to the other, <laughs> the other end. He's a veteran. You expect him to make the right decision there, but uh, we'll see if this Badger defense can make a stand here. Ohio State has been very productive after halftime. Also, something to keep in mind. Both these field goal kickers have been great tonight both sides three for three for both of them. And so if you're unable to come up with a touchdown you, you, you'd like to think that that would be able to con continue for both these kickers. Although those goal posts can look a little bit narrower in overtime as much at stake as there is tonight. Paul Christ had. Rafael Gagliganoni when he kicked that that clutch field goal to beat LSU in Lambeau bombed it out from long distance and then he injured his back had surgery and this guy right here Andrew Endicott who again did not attempt a field goal in his high school career he's a senior a senior who had more tackles than field goals made in his career covering kickoffs Buckeyes on offense from the 25 if you wouldn't have told me that tonight I'd never know he, no. is, he has been money. Wilson motions in. They pitch it back to Samuel on a reverse. Slips a tackle. And the Brooklyn native muscles down inside the 15. Heck of a block there in front of him to be able to give him some room to run there. McLaurin, the sophomore out of Indianapolis, gave him that first down. It looked like he might be short, but it, he pushed that defensive back on the, almost into the sideline. Whistle before this first down play. Right tackle Prince who's had a rough night pass protection moved. False start. Offense number 59. Five yard penalty remains. First down. Two of the third penalties tonight for Ohio State that they've been flagged for. You know Prince is looking out there and he's seen a lot of number 42. And he can do that to tackles. It's not just that Prince is struggling. He's struggling against some really talented pass rushers and guys with a lot of quick twitch and T.J. Watt and Garrett Dooley. So first and 15. Barrett from the pocket over the middle complete. And breaking free is James Clark who gets involved the junior from Florida down inside the 10. Yeah, good patience there. He felt the blitz T.J. Watt and also Jack Sitchie came on the right. They were picked up. He was looking downfield into the end zone but ended up coming down and kind of checked that down. Good decision to be patient there by Barrett. Barrett keeps it. Tries to get outside. Flag comes in as the quarterback is dropped at the five. It'll be first and goal. Watt stopped him, but let's check the marker. We've got a hold by Jamarco Jones, a left tackle from Ohio State. Holding offense, number 74. Ten yard penalty. Repeat second down. They had, they had two penalties all night, Kirk, and now two in this series in overtime. Out there, Alex James, who's trying to chase JT Barrett down, and one of the reasons Barrett was able to get around him is Jones. Now the tackle on the other side, and we've been talking a lot about Prince. This time it's Jones with the with the hold. Buckeyes making it tough on themselves in this series. Back to second and 13 now. TJ Watt trying to get his headgear adjusted. Barrett. Flips it to Samuel. The Badgers close him down. Samuel still has the speed to make the corner and get back down inside the 10. It'll be third down and about two. His acceleration to the corner, and then you'd think he might just go out of bounds, but then he turns his shoulders 
kind of squares up and picks up another six yards. Meyer out on the field. And this third and two. Bringing Mike Weber into the game. What do you think, Kirk? If he gets out there, does he dare go for it? Weber, probably a zone read of some kind where you give Weber or Barrett a chance to run the football, depending on the read. Got to hurry. Play clock at two. Barrett keeps it. Fires. End zone. Brown touchdown. Noah Brown stretched out and makes a catch in a dart from the quarterback to give Ohio State the lead. They gave the action, the zone read action, which kind of froze the defense. And then he was one on one on the outside. There's the zone read look. Now it's just one on one. He recognizes the back shoulder fade is there. The defender, Tendall, never really even saw the football. So instead of throwing it downfield, great timing, great job by both the receiver and the quarterback, JT Barrett, going to his guy, Noah Brown. Is the important conversion now. Durbin knocks it through, and Tyndall has played a pretty good game, but he's the guy that got beat by Amara Darbo from Michigan for the game winning touchdown the last game. Yeah, and look at the position where he puts this football. That, that is something you work on and work on. And in fact, when you call the play in the huddle, depending on where the, the defender is in relation to the receiver, dictates where the throw is. So Brown doesn't really know. Where he's going to throw the ball, he hopes that Barrett sees the same thing he sees, and that's why you practice hours and hours and hours with quarterbacks and receivers with that timing. First yeah. touchdown pass tonight for JT to go with the two running touchdowns. That gives him sole possession of the all-time Ohio State record for touchdowns responsible for. They overcome a, a false start and a holding penalty in that series. And now, as you said earlier, now the ball kind of goes back into the hands of Alex Hornibrook in this Wisconsin offense. It's had a pretty good night. Pretty good night, but they have had their issues down in the red zone. Must score to force double overtime. Clement, first down carry, hit immediately. No gain as Webb joined the defensive front that time. When you see a play blown up like that, it's all about the defensive line. The linebackers may end up getting involved in making the tackles, and that time you saw Jerome Baker, but it was really Michael Hill, 77, and Draymond Jones, the freshman out of Cleveland, that, that impacted that play because of the initial surge that they got at the line of scrimmage. Tony Brooks straight back. Flushed. Fires far side. High ball caught. As Will Wright, the Columbus native, sets up the Badgers first and goal. This is a big time throw from a freshman. Watch this. He gets hit by Sam Hubbard almost as he's releasing this. Throws it to a spot. And there's Will Wright, as you said, out of Columbus. The toe tap to get them both down. Heck of a catch and a big time throw by Hornybrook. You're right though. He got he got cut in half by that hit. The young guy showing his toughness and his accuracy. And it's Clement behind Ramish in the eye formation. He's got it, but again, penetration and no gain. Chris Worley, the linebacker, cleaned it up. Watch him close down on this. You'll see Landers come here, Worley coming around from the outside. Landers being able to get in there just affects the timing of it. The pulling guard unable to pick up his block, but great penetration there. I'll tell you, Robert Landers has a great future. A true freshman that wasn't necessarily highly touted, but he has had a great start to his young career. Badgers have three plays to get four yards and force double OT. Women goes in motion. Horny Brook back, paddling back, paddling, and has to just throw it out of the end zone. Third down coming up. They tried to hide Fumagalli there on the play action. He, he was blocking. They were hoping that the linebackers would just assume that he was in the block, and then they released him late. But Raekwon McMillan, again, the leader of the defense, picked him up, and the freshman just gave up on the play and had to throw it out of the back of the end zone. Clement dragged down for no gain. That was Baker sprinting out to drop the running back. It is fourth down. Badgers down to one play. 
All comes down to this heck of a play there by Jerome Baker with his speed to be able to chase down Clement. And now you're Paul Chris, one of the best play callers in the sport. A lot of things have worked. Now you wonder how does he give his young quarterback a chance here to execute and throw the football. Ohio State will be coming after him. Urban Meyer is going to call a timeout. So now you got Paul Chris trying to come up with a play that'll work. You've got the Ohio State Defensive Brain Trust, Luke Fickle, Greg Schiano trying to put their puzzle pieces in place. And this Ohio State team then trailed throughout much of this night. A lot of youth in that group right there, a lot of inexperience battling back and trying to secure a win with one more defensive play. I think what Luke Fickle and his group are trying to figure out is do you play man to man? Or do you play zone? You, you, you play man to man, and you're at the risk of maybe some rub routes or some picks down in this area. If you play zone, you're at the risk of Fumagalli and others finding a hole in that zone. So they're trying to kind of figure out what they think will give them the best chance. One thing you know, they're going to bring some pressure after Hornybrook. And Paul Chris, you call him one of the best play callers in college football. He's got. The right play called, and then his young quarterback, who's played so well tonight, can execute it. Ohio State, a stop away from their 20th consecutive win in true road games. We're playing man to man. Ball game on the line. Horny Brook. Knocked down. Ohio State makes a defensive stand and survives in Madtown in overtime. Nick Bosa and Tyquan Lewis got in the quarterback's face. And Barrett with a touchdown pass in overtime to Brown shows his medal. He denies the Badgers an upset. Street fight, that's what Urban expected. He got it. That's exactly right. How about the pressure? We just talked about coming after Hornybrook, but it was really, Chris, it was a combination of the coverage downfield and the pressure. There's nowhere for him to go with this football. He's trying to get PB, who you'll see coming into your screen. But watch when the pressure gets to him. And look right now, there's nobody open. You'll see Peavy trying to work in his inside here. There's just nobody open. It was great coverage downfield. Nobody open. He's forced to just eat the ball. And Ohio State gets to him there on the last play of the game with Jalen Holmes.